Sasa hapa ndio ninaanza kujielezea nasema uh, when you receive a physics paper KCC physics paper the first thing you must ensure is that uh, you read the instruction number one, write your name index number in the spaces provided sign and write the date of examination answer all questions in the spaces provided in the question below you are supposed to spend first 15 minutes so this is most uh, where students ignore most spending 5 15 minutes of two and a half hours allowed for this paper reading the whole paper carefully the reason as to why we you are supposed to spend 15 minutes this one will help you know the nature of the curve and uh, also whether the curve is a straight line or a, or the curve is uh, the the graph you are drawing is a graph Marks are given for clear records of the observations made, suitability and accuracy. So the accuracy depends with the tool you are using. For example, the vinyl calipers, micrometer screw gauge, we have the thermometers and ETC. Then non-programmable silent electronic calculators and NEC mathematical tables. So majority of students will carry the calculators, but we forget the NEC mathematical tables. Mm -hmm. Then all the answers must be in English. So I will go to part D. Part D. Students are supposed to spend 5-15 minutes. So let me start uh, reading the practical. So for example, question one, you have the following. Two cells in a cell holder, a switch, micrometer screw gauge, nichrome wire, mounted on the millimeter scale, voltmeter, ammeter, jockey, and also connecting wires and crocodile clips. So using the micrometer screw gauge, measure and record diameter d of the wire so the diameter of the micrometer school gauge in all the school laboratories range between two uh, 0 0.28 to uh, 3.1 millimeters so in this case it is 0 0.28 so it will be 3.10 millimeters so you must use a pencil because uh, when you make a mistake with a pencil you can easily use a rubber to clear the the errors then for example, let's say for example, you got the diameter to be zero, 0, 0.30. 0. Now that is the diameter in millimeters. So you need to convert into meters. So when you keep this figure in the calculator, it is going to give you 0. 0.0003 millimeters. So you have a half mark for millimeters and a half mark for meters but now this one will not get the answer don't forget this last decimal place so it is 0 0.0003 meters three zero so this zero must be included if not included uh, you will be denied a half a mark and you'll have lost then set up as shown in the figure below use the voltmeter reading the voltmeter measure the potential difference e of the battery before closing the switch so you must make sure you have arranged the apparatus as shown in the figure these are two cells uh, when you buy when you have the new uh, dry cells each dry cell has been labeled 1.5 volts 1.5 volts so when there are two it is going to be 1.5 two of them which gives you 3.0 as you can see we have each dry cell uh, labeled 1.5 1.5 volts at this point so this 1.5 is the emf of the cell 1.5 volts then if there are two it is 1.5 plus 1.5 this gives you a total emf of 3.0 volts but in the answer you don't give 3.0 because when you connect a voltmeter with the two cells this resistance of the wire so the value that you are supposed to write here should be slightly below uh, 3.0 so i can put 2.9 you cannot write 3.0 because you have to connect it to a voltmeter now these are the basic measurement required <clears throat> then you have to adjust length l of the 0 0.1 meter close to the switch and read and record the value and current so in this case i want to use the value of one of my students in this school 
So for example, this boy, you can see the trend. We have the length in meters and the current in amperes. So in this case, this guy, the first value, he got 0 0.4, 0 0.382, 0 0.26. And now you can see the trend, the, it is decreasing. So we can easily know what scale was this student using? What scale was the student using? So in this case, for example, I know the student was using a scale ranging from zero to one. That is the scale. Then the reciprocal of the current, we have it to be here. Now, before you draw the graph, make sure you read the questions. So in this case, you have been told on the grid provided now, for, for example, let's say this student got 0 0.40. I will come and record in this uh, table, he got 0 0.4. Then the second value, he got 0 0.32. Make sure you use the pencil. Then we have 0 0.26 and 0 0.22. Then he got 0 0.2, 0 0.16 and 0 0.14. So as you can see, the trend is decreasing but the number of decimal places are not uniform the trend is decreasing and the number of decimal places are not are not uniform the trend is decreasing and the number of decimal places are not uniform so you must ensure that the number of decimal places are uniform so you add a zero here and you add a zero for you to get full max then the current this value you need to key in in the calculator and you must give your answer to four significant figures so the four significant figure so the reciprocal of this one is 2.5 this one will get 3.125 in four significant figure 3.846 4 5.0 0 0 we have 6.25 and 7.143. So these are four significant figures. But when you see the first value, this is not a four significant figure. This is a four. So you have to put it for first, second, third, fourth. Now you have completely filled the table. So when you have filled the table correctly into four significant figures, the one that requires using a calculator, you are going to get a mark. Then on the grid provided, plot a graph of 1 over i y-axis against L. So before you plot a graph, you come and read the questions involving the graph. From the graph, determine the gradient S. So determine the gradient S, this one clearly tells you it is a straight line. So the curve you are going to draw is going to be a straight line. Then we have intercept C on 1 over i-axis. So 1 over i-axis, you are going to plot it along the y-axis. So in this case, this graph must cut the uh, the y axis so this the first and the second one is going to give us the nature of the curve so we come back to the question now on the grid provided plot a graph of 1 over i y axis against l so in that case you have to write the title you say a graph a graph of 1 over i into bracket y axis axis against against l and you must make sure you use a pencil then you underline your title very well after that you come and plot your graph you plot your graph one over i again make sure that the graph you are plotting must cover more than three quarter of the total page given and after plotting the graph don't forget this guy guy called zero so don't forget the guy called zero while plotting the graph so this guy called zero you don't need to forget and also graph is always a continuous line so when you label the axis so this is the x-axis so you are being told against l so you must put the length l let's say along the x-axis we have length we have the length L. Length L in meters. 
along the y-axis, we have one over the reciprocal of the current. So in this case, we say one over i. Then you put the units also per amperes. Then in this case, you, you label, you give a scale. So I will give the x-axis 0 0.1. 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 have 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 you must have a uniform scale we have 1.0 uh, 2.0 3.0 4 5.0, 0, 6.0, 0, 7.0. So the maximum value is uh, more past 7, so I will go to the last one, 8.0. So the first sketch, 0 0.1, length is 0 0.1, 1 over i is 2.500. 0, 0. So in this case, I come at 2.5 as at this point. You put a cross. You only put a cross. Don't use a dot. Don't use a star. Then 0 0.2. 3.125 so that uh, is about 3.1 3.1 is in between 3.0 and 3.2 i put a cross use a cross only 0 0.3 and 3.8 0 0.3 and 3.8 i have it this point 0 0.4 and 4.5 0 0.4 and 4.5 have it here 0 0.5 and 5.0 0 0.5 5 5.0 0 0.6 0 6.3 0 0.6 and we have 6.3 so that point 0 0.7 or 7.1 that's the final point and 7.1 so my another mark will be awarded from the point the total points plotted as you had uh, filled in the table then because you had read the question, we know the graph must be a straight line. So in this case, uh, most of the practicals, not all values will be able to fit. So you take the line of best fit, at least three. Make sure that at least three points, line must cut at least three points. Then you have a very straight line. So again, we also read that the line must cut the y-axis. So you extend it until it cuts the y-axis. There's no harm for that. So after doing our graph that way, so that is the graph, which is awarded five marks. So we have six marks for table, five marks. So most of the students, uh, where they uh, they always get the few marks is at filling the table because maybe of the accuracy and everything. So the graph, you should be able to get full five marks. So we have drawn the graph. We have graph that has the title. The axes are correct labeled, and this guy called zero has not been uh, forgotten. Then in this case, we have the uniform scale, and also the plotted points, all plotted points are on the graph. Then also a line of best fit. So we come. So, so long as it has gone, it has passed the last value. So long as the curve has passed the last value, there's no harm with that. So you can extend when it uh, uh, passed the last value. The last plotted point, it has gone past the last plotted point. So as you can see along the x-axis, it has gone past 0 0.7. And also along the y-axis, it has gone past, past uh, 7.1. So there's no harm with that. So let us now answer the questions. From the graph, you have been told from the graph, determine the gradient S. So in this case, we say the gradient, the gradient, this is the same as the change in y-axis. Our y-axis, we plotted 1 over i. So change in 1 over i over change in the x-axis change in L. So now the gradient, now how do you determine the gradient of the curve? Come back to the curve. Take any two points within the curve. You draw a small triangle. Just any two points within the curve and draw a small triangle. So for example, this is my two points within the curve and I draw the triangle. So I will say that this side 
is changed in one over i because it is the vertical axis. Now the horizontal axis is changed in length. Now the vertical axis and the horizontal axis so change in one over i. So in this case, the maximum value in this case, the change in one over i, we have 4.50. You subtract 3.0. So we have 4.5 minus 3.0 divide by change in length change in length the length we have 0 0.4 you subtract 0 0.75 so this is 0 0.4 subtract 0 0.75 so I'll come and say 0 0.4 yeah. 0 0.4 subtract 0 0.75 so this is the same as 1.5 over 0 0.4 minus 0 0.75. This we have uh, 0 0.225. 0 0.4 minus 0 0.75, 0 0.325. So this is 0 0.325. So in this case, we have 1.5 divided by 0 0.325. Let me use a calculator and give the answer. 1.5 divided by 0 0.325. This one should be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.175. This one should be 0 0.175. So that is 0 0.225, 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 divided by 0 0.225. The answer is 6.66. 6. We must give to four significant figures, 667. 6, so what is the unit of the gradient now? Change in I, that is the change in current. So the unit now, we come and uh, interpret. You just have a small space where you get so the change in current so that is i over l change in current over l so the unit of current is in ampere this is one of our current per ampere over meter unit of uh, the length you used meter so it is per ampere per meter so that is the units of the gradient so we have you have to score the full three marks when you use the graph intercept c on one over i so the intercept where the line cuts the y-axis so we have 1.0 this is this is 1.0 this is 2.0 so it's according to the graph you are going to draw this one should be 1.8 so you have 1.8 1.8 what 1.8 the units is per ampere per ampere so it is 1.8 per ampere then given that 4k determine the value of k1 so we want to find the value of k1 so in this case we have 4k k1 is equal to when you multiply both sides it will be s times pi d squared e so to k1 divide every side by 4 so to put a k1, you'll get k1 to be the slope times pi d squared e over 4. So this is the same as the slope, which is 6.67667 times pi, this in the calculator, times d squared. The value of d, we had already found it from procedure 1, part a. 0 .00030. 0 .00030 0 0.00030 0 0.00030 divided by uh, d squared that one should be squared times the value of e the electromotive force we got to be 2.9 2.9 then divide by 4 <coughs> so the value that you get you get the answer now here the value you have you get the answer then k2 so k2 over e is equal to c 
So this implies that when you multiply both sides by e by e, so the value of k2 is equal to ce. So the value of c, the intercept c, we have the intercept c, so the c is 1.8, we have 1.8 times the electromotive force, which is 2.9, multiplied by 2.9. So when you do your practical this way, you'll be able to score more than 15 and above, 15 over 20 in part question one only. So for more information, just subscribe to my channel, I will be giving more updates. Thank you.